and I like Bob. And the other day at home with the wife, like, you know, and you, she's, they still won't let me back at work, like, you know, because of the trouble with the following that's like. So anyway, yesterday, like, about mid-morning, I'd spent a couple of hours staring out in my back window, you know. I put one of the curtain nets over my shoulder so that I can stare hands-free, like, you know. It's been a really good... Staring session, like you know, I, I saw a pigeon, like a black bird, and like, a ginger cat, you know, with a red collar. Oh shit, I've said black bird, that's gonna get me in my bother, I expect. Anyway, it suddenly struck me, like that, you know, the flower bed had like a little dip in the center of it, you know, like someone had scooped up some soil and nicked it, so I thought, ah, you'd better go right straight out there and investigate it. Dubbed And we turned the curtain like net to its resting position, you know, and the right place to have four furrows in it and to slightly overlap the other net, like, you know, the one on the east. I made sure that I did it right, otherwise the wife would, would know and I'd, that I'd been staring out the window like, and she doesn't approve of it as a pastime and I don't want to get shouted out for now again. You know what I mean? So I, I put my wellies on and wrap up warm with me on the rack and my Newcastle scarf and bubble hat. Oh, just even saying wrap up it puts me in right in the mood for a chicken wrap. I know the chicken wrap me, you know. I like the chicken roll me, I like the lettuce quick bee, and I like the wrap cut in half so I don't have to approach it from a blunt end. I don't like tomato in it. It's a very vibrant and red colour, you know, and the wife has banned tomatoes from the house because they remind her of the blood of Christ. <laughs> Tina, the bubble that... The bubble that actually belongs to my son, you know, I bought it from about five years ago from the bubble at department of the club shop, like, uh, not with the last time we went anywhere together, to be honest. After we left the shop, he went off with his mates to watch the game, you know. I don't know why they don't sell chicken wrapped into the match, you know, it could make a killing. Well, as I'm walking up the yard, and I, know, I look into the Albanian fellas' garden, and I notice that he has a freshly potted up plant by his back door, you know. Well, I'm no detective, like, but it strikes me as very suspicious that he has fresh soil for his plant, and meanwhile, soil appears to have been removed from my border. I go to the border and put me hand in the little scooped out area so I can assess the amount of soil that's been removed, you know. Just then the wife opens the bedroom window, like, and she shouts at me. What the fuck are you doing in my garden when I'll let's bubble at you, little fucking creep? I don't give you permission to funny about in my brother. So I, I said, I'm sorry about coming in the garden without your position, love. I'm sorry for wearing Gary's hat again without your permission, but... I'm sorry, but I'm not funny about those. I was examining the soil for a possible theft. Don't fucking answer me back, you little fucking doyle. Get back inside and cook me a couple of fucking boiled eggs. Scoop them fucking out and put them on waiter becks. And they'd better be fucking runny. Then like, she shuts the window and just stares at me, you know, like I'm an advert. No, I do as I'm told, you know, she's a bit feisty, the wife, especially when she's in turmoil over Jesus, like... I don't know her very much, really. I asked her once why she had rejected Jesus, and she just said, If Jesus was all he fucking cracked up at me, then he wouldn't have cheered me to you, you little fat. It's fair enough, I suppose, anyway. Later that day, I solved the mystery of the little dip in the border. It was where the ginger cat had taken her shit. No, like, no, 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 no. I'll sign off now, like, the wife's just banged on the ceiling for some scramble, like. 
to I just thought I'd hey, hey, I thought I'd tell you some jokes like to cheer myself up, you know, so just bear with us as you get me joke book out. I went into the shop and I said, I'm gonna buy a goldfish and like the guy said, Do you want in the aquarium? Said, I don't care what star size it is. My mate is in love with two school bags. He's bisexual. <laughs> Just a second. I formed the local gymnastics that could teach me how to do the splits. He said, well, how flexible are you? I said I can't make Tuesdays the Thursdays. I went to the local video shop and I said, can I borrow a back one forever? I said, no, no, you have to bring it back. You have to bring it back tomorrow. Dude, I've got some more audio. My photograph's gone out of out of the out of the wrong way. I went into the shop and I said, can someone sell me a kettle? The bloke said... <coughs> the bloke said... <coughs> Kenwood. I said, where's he, where's he then? <laughs> So that's Peter's. Uh, I always send him a message back, like. Do you? Yeah. It's not a one-way correspondence thing. No, he needs. That's good. He needs bringing out of himself. I'm, he needs I'm, a bit of encouragement. Yeah. I'm gonna try and get him to uh, to go out in his garden more. Maybe keep notes of what he sees and that. Right. It's just my. I like him to get in a bit of fresh air. Okay. So Peter Beardsley sent me one of his uh, updates, Andy. Do you good. Want to hear that? I'd love to sit back and hear that, please. Uh, okay. Here we go. All right, Bob. I'm still not back in work, you know, because of the business with the foreign lads, like, you know, so just you know, I'm really getting under the wife's feet, you know, and watching the clock go round and round and round and round until it's time to go and sleep, you know, in the spare room. Me mate Billy, the bus... The bus came round yesterday, you know. He brought me a colouring book and some crayons, I like guess. Very nice example of the genre, you know. It's got a seal balancing on a big ball, unicorn, a moomin, looking at the suitcase, and a caravan next, next to a tree, I like you know. My favourite. One was a robot feeding a robot baby with an oil can, so I've been doing that today. Billy didn't get me a silver pencil, so to be honest, the robot looks a bit shit. I coloured it in brown you know, instead, so I hope no one sees it, else that probably be me in more trouble. Dog dead. <laughs> Billy, you know, took me out in his car to cheer me up, you know. We went up the Asda Lake and got a couple of chicken wraps to eat in the car park, you know. Well, the moment I bit into it, I knew there was something wrong, like, you know. It was a double disaster, you know, because, one, it was whole meal wrap, which is hard work, you know. I like me chicken wrap to have a nice soft melty in your mouth, you like, you know, a melt in your mouth sort of texture to it. You know, almost stodgy, Bob, you know. Two with that fucking chilli in it. <laughs> now, for me, chilli is far too striking to be in the chicken wrap, you know, it's very overpowering. Still, chicken wrap is a chicken wrap, so... I persevered, and I must say, the chicken was nice and lumpy. Lovely, lumpy, lumpy chicken. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah
On the way back there, you know, we popped into the bookies and I won a tenner on the gambling machine, like, you know, and I, I felt really happy. You, you know, like you might feel if you, you know, you pull off a sharp dance move at an important disco. Anyway, that was short-lived because when I got home, the wife was waiting for me at the front door. Where the fuck have you been, you little fucking creep? I've been waiting for over a fucking hour for me poor sticks. Then I'm sorry, love, I went out without telling you. And I'm sorry I've left your eye and dry, poor stick wife. But Billy the bus popped round and took us out for a drive. Billy the bus, that fucking fat wanger. <laughs> Hold on, have you been eating behind my back? <laughs> well, if she knew I'd had foreign bread, she would have lamped me, like, you know. Ever since she rejected Jesus, she's banned bread because it reminds her of the fella, like, and whole meal's worse because it's such an intense bread. Probably around, like, even when Jesus was alive, like. So I told her I had a sausage roll and that I was very sorry I had done that. And where'd you get your fucking money for that fucking dog? When, where did you get the money for that, you fucking dial? Have you been in my fucking purse? Empty your pockets now! Well, I'm doing some tour late and of course she sees the ten pound late there uh, one of the bookies. Oh, you little fucking scheming thief! Give us that cash back and get four fucking poaches on! And they'd better be fucking runny! As for that useless fat prick Billy! <laughs> Get on the floor, tell him he's not fucking welcome back here no more. I bet it was him that put you up to it. Well, I didn't dare tell her I'd beaten the bookies, like, so I just did as she was told. <laughs> She's upstairs asleep now, so I just cut her in as quietly as I can, like, you know. My son used to, like, to cut her in, in but he always did the clown first, like, cos said it reminded me him of me, you know. That's a nice memory. Anyway, I'll finish up, cheers, maybe cheers both up, Bob, with some jokes, you know, like from me, from me joke book. Just got me, just got me joke book here somewhere. Oh, I was in the jungle and there was this monkey with a tin opener. I said, you don't need a tin opener for a banana. He said, no, this is for the fucking custard. <coughs> I told my wife I'd got a job at the bowling alley. Ten pins, she said. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a permanent post, I replied. <laughs> I went to the doctor <coughs> and they said, I've got a problem, you know. I always have a dump every morning, it's six o'clock. He said, what's the problem with that? He said, don't get up the late day. <coughs> <laughs> this recruitment consultant asked me, he said, what do you think of voluntary work? I said, I wouldn't do it if you paid me. I can't tell the one about the elephant, mate, because her wife says that it's too, too mucky, so... I'll say it, Bob, anyway. One Peter Beasley, there's only one Peter Beasley. One Peter Beasley. See, Bob.